Okay guys, uh, Apple have updated Logic a couple of days ago to version 10.2.1. I'll just show you some of the basic stuff that applies to most people uh, working with Logic rather than people doing more specialist stuff. Starting with um, drummer tracks, there's a really cool feature here now. Um, if you select, and it's the same whether it's an electronic drummer or a, uh, an acoustic drummer, or a kit drummer, um, if you select a drummer region, the editor below at the top has that bar across the top and there was always the little arrow on the left which if you click it, it it solos that region, mutes all the other regions and puts a cycle range around it. So you can loop round and edit that region soloed. On, off. There's a new icon next to it now, a playhead icon. Now if you switch that playhead icon to the off yellow state we've got this fantastic new thing now where the playhead is playing and it crosses the drummer regions they automatically select and the editor below updates to show the edit state of the drummer region that the playhead is crossing that's very very useful and turn that playhead icon here back to its white state and then it just behaves as normal it doesn't update so we got that that's pretty cool um, other stuff let's convert this to an electronic drummer track Julian. Okay, so now it's an electronic drummer track triggering drum machine designer, but this is the same if it's an instrument track with drum machine designer on. Um, if we open drum machine designer, let's close the editor. Okay, now with drum machine designer, you can drag and drop multiple samples onto the pads. So if I go to my project media here, I've got eight djembe samples that I imported with the um, audio file, add audio file, right? So I've got eight djembe samples here and I drag and drop them and let go on any pad and that's the pad that the population of the multiple samples will, will begin with so I'll drop onto this bonk pad here the eight samples boom like that let go and there's a little pause and those eight samples are then populated and the population begins on the pad you drop and then works across to the right and when it gets to the end of a row it steps up a row and begins populating on the left working across if it reaches the end of a page like here there's the first two samples starting on that pad it reaches the end of the page so it goes across to the next page it starts on the bottom left works across populating the samples and then up to the next row and it works across until it reaches the end of the sample amount you dropped and any remaining voices are left intact the maximum samples you can drag and drop is 25 because um, the ultra beat in the background behind drum machine design only has 25 voice slots okay now if we look at the smart controls for a regular factory voice um, you get the single row of smart controls but a drag and drop sample gets different smart controls uh, coarse and fine pitch connected to the oscillator um, in ultra beat for the pad attack and decay uh, which controls the amp envelope um, for the ultra beat voice connected to the pad, volume and pan for the voice output, high and low cut filter for the EQ on the voice output, spreader and reverb for the spreader and reverb plugin on the output for the voice, and drive and crush for the uh, overdrive and bit crusher on the output for the voice. They all get always get those same smart controls and the same effects on the output. Okay. Uh, the other thing we've got is we've got this new empty kit for drum machine designer um, so select the just track here it's the same whether it's a drum machine designer on a drummer track or, a, or an instrument track in the library here drum machine designer and there's this empty kit there look empty kit now this isn't as good as the empty kit that I showed you how to build in the drum machine designer tutorials I, I showed how to build an empty default kit ready to load samples into but nonetheless I can think of some things that can be done with this so I'm going to do a tutorial on it in the next week you load the empty kit <coughs> and now we've got an empty drum machine designer kit there it is empty pads and um, the smart controls are different to a regular drum machine designer kit now we can select pads and load factory voices on or we can drag and drop multiple samples I'll get the same eight djembe samples and drag and drop them. This time, beginning on the bottom left pad on the first page. Let go. And there's the eight samples populated. Starting on that pad, working across to the right, 
then up to the next row, working across. And each pad has the same smart controls as I showed you just a minute ago when we dragged the samples into the after party factory kit and the same effects on each output for each drag and drop sample. Okay, you can also add factory voices to pads, you know, just like that as usual. Okay, now um, these these empty kits, if we look in the stack, open up the stack, there's no six submixes or anything. Inside the stack you just get the main output one, two with the ultra beat on, followed by additional outputs, one for each voice pad, whether it's a factory loaded voice or a drag and drop sample. And every output is routed to the final group bus. Okay? There's no six submixes or anything. Okay? So on the actual drum machine designer itself, for the empty kit, the front panel, when you're in default kit mode, um, has different smart controls to a regular drum machine designer kit. We still have the effects panel here, but we don't get the six mix controls here because there isn't the six submixes in, in, the, in the stack. Instead we get an additional page of smart controls controlling parameters of plugins on the final output. We get a high and low tone, which is a general treble boost and cut and bass boost and cut. These control the same EQ as the high and low cut filter here. Drive and crush control the overdrive and bit crusher. Compressor controls the compressor and transient controls the enveloper on the final output. Okay. There also isn't the page, obviously, to click through to the two panels of sends because we don't have the six submixes with the sends on. Right like that. All right, so that's this empty kit. And now also with this drum machine designer, uh, if you look in the top right here, as I drag its size bigger and smaller, there's a percentage display telling you how big it is. That's back at 100%. Okay. So that's this new empty kit and dragging and dropping of multi-samples, plus the updating of the regions in the editor automatically when the playhead crosses for drummer tracks. That's pretty cool. Um, another thing is um, plug-in windows, whether it's an instrument plug-in, or an effect plugin. You used to have to grab the top to move them around like that. Now you can grab the bottom as well and move them around. Okay, so there's that. Okay, other stuff. Um, 30 of the plugins have had updates. Um, it's things like the delays. Um, it's the smaller plugins that have had the updates. So the sample delay the stereo delay and the tape delay have all had an update. A lot of the modulation small plugins have had an update. Uh, most of the distortion small plugins have had an update. You know, and the update looks like this this green new look to the pots. And also, of these 30 or so plugins that have been updated, some of them have not only had a new look, but they've had new features as well. Now, the new look was done to make them more compatible with. Um, Retina display, and if you make them full size, the graphics are perfect. So, 30 plugins have had an update, and um, some of those have had new features added as well. Okay, so there's that. What else have we got? Well, um, here's another one there's um, an instrument track with a MIDI region on it. Double click, it opens in the piano edit there. There's the notes as you penciled them in or played them in from a master keyboard or something. Now we've got a new thing now. Um, if I choose a region, a MIDI region, and in the region parameter box here, I transpose it up or down. The transposition is reflected in the MIDI editor. That didn't used to happen before. So we've got that now, that's quite useful. And that automatic transposition to match any transpose that's done with the region parameter box, that happens if the view menu, this new feature, region transpose is ticked, which it is by default. So you'll get this automatic transposing happening for the MIDI notes in the editor if you transpose a region from the parameter box here. That's that's pretty useful. Got that. Um, what else have we got? Well, if you look in the library, okay, um, here for example, my library category world, there's this little arrow pointing down next to it. So then if I select that category, I see that the subcategory here, percussion, has the same little download arrow. And inside that subcategory, there's some undownloaded content. 
So the library now shows you, with the visual indicator, any undownloaded content that you haven't downloaded yet. Okay, there's that. And apparently the Apple Loops does the same thing. Well, I've got them all downloaded, so I can't see this visual indicator. But apparently the Apple Loops will tell you, there'll be a visual cue like in the library now, to tell you about any undownloaded Apple Loop content. And there's about 600 or so new Apple Loops that have been added as well. Okay, so there's that. Other stuff. Um, also, back in Piano Edit, They've brought back the snap MIDI draw and automation. So now we can snap our nodes for our MIDI draw to whatever snap value we choose. Okay, that's that's really cool. But sadly, they still haven't fixed the um, transferring of MIDI draw to track automation and back the other way. That's still broken. It doesn't really work properly, uh, sadly. Also, I don't know if this was in the last update or they've done that in this update. I didn't notice it in the last update, but for the MIDI draw, you can choose your continuous controllers, but the smart controls for the instrument are there now. I didn't notice those. Maybe they were added in the last update, but they are there. You can select any of the smart controls and put in MIDI draw for that smart control. But maybe that was in the last update. I didn't notice it. Okay, so there's that. They fixed. They brought back the snap for MIDI draw. Um, what else? Um, yeah, again, I don't know if this is in the last update, but you know how each plugin in, in on a channel has got a little on-off switch on the, the left where you can sort of swipe down a row of plugins and they turn off or on. That may have been in the last update. I didn't notice. Other stuff. Um, let's take this drummer region here and convert it to MIDI. So we've got a MIDI uh, region here with it, it could be a drummer region or another region with multiple notes on multiple pitches. If you double click and open it in the piano edit, you get the MIDI notes as usual. Now, a lot of people don't use the step editor, but if you open a MIDI region in the step editor now, it automatically creates a row for each MIDI note in the region. That's pretty useful if you ever use this for doing drum stuff particularly. And if you don't know um, step edit, you can select a row, and um, here's the parameter box for it. You can retitle the row there. You can Each row can have its own individual grid resolution. Um, the pen width, that's the width of these vertical ladders, which represents the velocity of each note. Uh, you can set the pen width differently for each row, and you can set the note length differently for each row, which is useful if, say, you're um, triggering a sampler that plays back the sample based on the length of the note, things like that. So you've got automatic creation of rows now per, per, per note um, in the step editor. That's pretty useful if you use it. Um, what else have we got? Well, another thing we've got is um, um, I've got three audio tracks here. Just It's just me singing a children's nursery rhyme, to be honest. One, two, three, four, five, one. Seven. Okay, so if you do a lot of film score work or multi tracking work, you often need to bounce off stems. That's a file from a track, right? And now you can do that with multiple tracks. You just select multiple tracks, file, export, and you can export multiple tracks as each one as its own audio file or stem. And you can also do that with um, regions, you know, if these were regions spaced across the, um, the composition. You know, I had two stacked on top of each other. Maybe this is dialogue or something. Um, instead of selecting multiple tracks, you can select multiple regions like that and do the same thing. File, export, the selected regions, multiple regions, as audio files, stems. So multiple tracks, multiple regions can be exported as stems. That's really useful. As I said, if you do film score work, particularly if you know that field. Also, you know, if you're a multi-track guy, maybe you've got 15 tracks of drums you've recorded and you want to bounce those off as stems so that they can be taken to another studio to be worked on or whatever, it's useful for things like that. That's pretty cool now. And bounce is the same, that's been updated. I can take these three regions like, let's say these three regions on three different tracks and I can do bounce those three regions in place. And I can select multiple tracks and bounce multiple tracks in place and it, with the same usual options of create new track or, or uh, replace the old track, whatever. 
So we got that multiple export and bouncing of uh, uh, export and bouncing of multiple tracks and regions. Uh, other stuff we got. Um, well, I can't show you this with uh, audio tracks because I don't have enough inputs on my audio interface. But um, let me create an empty instrument track. Okay, imagine this was an audio track here. I'll just duplicate it a bunch of times. So you've got a whole bunch of audio tracks. Each one is assigned to a different input on the audio interface. Well, you can arm multiple audio tracks now. Uh, multiple tracks, whether audio or instrument, whatever. Um, I just can't show you with audio tracks because this only works if you've got one input per track. But you just click on the record ready and swipe down and you can swipe and record ready multiple tracks and undo the record ready like that. Like in the last update they introduced that for mute and they introduced it for the solo as well. Well you now got it for the record re you've now got it for the record ready. Okay, there's that. Other stuff. Um, what else have we got? We've got. Um, I showed you the newly updated plugins, did I not? Yes, I did. Any other stuff? Yeah, there is something else. Um, in one of my tutorials on our channel, I showed you how to map. Um, an electronic drum kit like V drums to either the drum kit designer or the um, drum machine designer. You create an instrument track, you assign a, a drum kit designer instrument to it or a, um, a drum machine designer in, uh, kit to it. I'll use a drum kit, um, the East Bay. So you put a, a drum kit on the instrument track and then in the environment you get the uh, channel for that kit. You create new mapped instrument, and then that mapped instrument you created. Where is it? Oh, it's behind something. But the uh, mapped instrument icon. You then drag it, drag its cable and connect it to the kit channel and um, then you can um, map your incoming notes to whichever notes, whichever drum sounds you want. Well, in a previous update they removed this input column. Well, it's back now. That's been brought back. So that's fixed now. Right, uh, other stuff we got. Um, There's um uh, yeah, in the preferences for audio, there's this new selectable multi-threading feature. Uh, if you do a lot of live track recording, like multiple live tracks, you can switch this multi-threading to playback and live tracks, and that configures Logic so that it takes advantage of the multi-threading to, multi to give you the best performance if you're recording multiple tracks at the same time while playing back tracks. Otherwise, you have it on playback tracks for normal use, you know, where you're building your compositions using instruments and recording maybe one or two tracks at the same time. Okay, so there's that new feature for multi threading for multiple recording of um, tracks. There's other bits and bobs, like there's a sh new shortcut that's been added to. Um, hide any tracks in in the arrangement that are they don't have regions on or any track automation I haven't looked into what that is uh, other stuff you can do um, you know you can always make a track stack in the in the track column like this just select your tracks bring up the shortcut menu and do create track stack choose a folder or summing stack and there's your track stack well, let me undo that. You can now do that in the mixer, which is, I suppose, fairly useful. I don't know. You could always do it here, but you can do it in the mixer now. Go into the mixer, select the channels for the tracks that you want to put into a stack. I've selected the three audio channels for these three audio tracks. Options, 
create track stack for the selected channel strips and there's the track stack folder or summing create it so you can create that in the mixer now and then you can also un unpack a stack um, flatten a stack rather just select the stack master channel options flatten stack and you can flatten it in the mixer or create in the mixer so there's that uh, did, 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 did anything else there's um, oh yeah with an audio region here double click opens in the editor if you put on flex and make it flex pitch you always have the piano display here uh, well now if you do create MIDI track from flex pitch data it not only gives you the pitch of each detected note but each of those detected MIDI no um, notes converted to MIDI now has velocity based on the loudness of the detected pitch of each of each transient okay so you get pitch and velocity for exported MIDI from flex pitch now and the other thing is um, if you switch to file the edit window is now full width um, and the other thing is with the flex pitch it's now available in the um, arrange area just turn on the flex and you make a track flex pitch and you get the piano display actually on the arrange page on the region like that yeah obviously you've got to zoom in and out to use it uh, which which you know you can set up key commands to zoom in and out but um, this is useful, I suppose, if you want to do flex pitch work, listening to the pitch as you're adjusting it in place as part of the song rather than soloed in the editor. So you've got that now. Piano display on the regions in the arrange area. Uh, any old iron, any old iron, any other, any other iron, anything else? Yeah, I think that's you a lot, really. Um, oh, there's another thing. When you're installing an EQ, you can click an EQ panel on any channel strip and it installs a regular channel EQ. Well, now if you um, hold down Shift and click an EQ box, it'll install a linear phase EQ. That may be useful for some people. <coughs> Anything else? Um, yeah, I see a lot really. That's, that's the basic stuff that will be useful to most people. Now I think that's the lot. So there you go. There's some stuff, you know, the, the main meat and potatoes of the update. There is a lot of other stuff. You can read the Apple release notes to see everything. Um, Logic 10.2.1. I hope that's useful and I'll see you for the next video, whatever it is.